Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and welcome back again to the ongoing series on my introduction to GitHub Actions. Again, each of the videos in this series, this is part six, builds off of information from the previous one, and all of this should be helping you get ready as well for the GitHub Action certification exam. Now, in part five, we talked about building a workflow for your pull request. So when we create a pull request that has changes in it, we want the code to build and test before um, we merge it into production. And we talked about building, we built that workflow and we showed you how it can block it and then how it can allow it. But we didn't show you how to make it required, meaning that you can't actually merge until you actually, the workflow completes successfully. So that's what we're going to do today, is look at how we can do that. Now, in the past, you did this using something called branch protection rules. And branch protection rules exist at the repository level. So you have to, you had to create them at each, in each repository. We have a successor to branch protection rules now, and it's called repository rule sets. Now, repository rule sets can still be defined at just the repository level, but they can also be defined at the organization level and then applied to multiple repositories. Now, in the demo today, we're going to look at doing this just at the repository level because we're trying to make sure that workflows in this repository pass. But be aware that most of what I'm showing you today can also be done at the organization level and then applied to multiple repos. So let's go see how to make that workflow required. So we're back here in our standard demo repository that we've been using all this time. So github.com, DevOps Elvis, my GitHub Actions presentation. And we still have out here from last video, our pull request. And we can see that the workflow passed. But it's not required. If it was required, there'd be the word required here. So the workflow passed, but even if it had failed, I could still merge this code if I wanted to. So what we want to look at is how can we make it where you can't merge this code unless the workflow completes successfully. So we're going to go over to settings. And in our settings in our repository, there is a rules section, and then there's two options underneath there, rule sets and insights. Rule sets is where we define the actual rules we're going to be using, and insights is where we can see statistics about those rules. So let's start off by creating a new rule set. Now, with a rule set, we can create either a new rule set that's based off of a branch, a rule set that's based off of a tag, or in preview right now is the ability to actually import rule sets that you may have exported from other repositories or other organizations. So we're going to create a new branch rule set. And let's blow this up just a little bit. So we need to give this rule set a name. So we're going to say this is PR workflow must pass. Or we'll call this the PR build test workflow must pass. And we're going to change it from being disabled to active. Now we could set it to evaluate, which means it was going to it would show me under insights how the rule is going to work, but it doesn't actually enforce the rule. But in this case, we want to enforce the rule, so we're going to say make it active. Now, one thing with the rule sets is once you put them in place, you're potentially blocking the pull request. So you might want to provide bypass options, people that can still merge the pull request even if all the rules haven't been followed. So when you add a bypass, you can add in a role or a team or even a GitHub app to allow it to bypass the repository rule set you're trying to put in place. 
So I'm going to say that organizational admins can bypass this rule. And I could say it can bypass it for anything that it applies to or only for pull requests because you're going to have repository rule sets that aren't necessarily related to pull requests. But I'm going to leave this as always for now. Then we need to specify the target branch or target branches. So by, I'm going to say include the default branch because that's normally what most of my pull requests are going to target is the default branch. But I have the ability to include all branches or the ability to include branches by a certain pattern so I can make it very dynamic. Let's say I start all my feature branches with feature slash. Then I could put, make this apply to all my feature branches if I wanted to. But in this case, I'm only worried about pull requests that are targeting the default branch. So I'm going to add the default branch as my targeting. And then I need to specify my criteria. And this is specifying the rules that are going to be applied. So in this case, I can restrict people from creating a branch that has the same name as the default branch. I can restrict them from deleting that branch. I can require linear history. I can use merge queues if I want to. But what we care about are a couple of things. We care about requiring a pull request before merging. And you'll notice that because I am requiring a pull request before merging, I have a lot of additional options here. I could require a certain number of approvals. I can dismiss stale pull request approvals when new commits are pushed. That's a good one to have. I can, um, I can require review from code owners, which means that if I've specified people that own certain parts of the code, I'm able to... Um, automatically add them as approvers on the on the pull request if they have made ch if changes have been made to the parts of the code that they own so your pull requests can have conversations in them so I can require those to be resolved before merging I think that's always important I can request a review from copilot oh that's interesting and I can also apparently um, in preview is the ability to to uh, what methods I'm going to allow but what really matters in all of this is I am requiring a pull request. Now, the other thing I want to make sure happens is that that GitHub Actions workflow job, the job that does the building and the testing, passes. So I'm going to require a status check to be true. And I'm not going to require a status check on creation. That's important because if you're creating new repos and you've applied this repository rule set to multiple, to all repositories in your organization, if I was doing this at the organization level, then it could possibly block you from being able to create repositories. But what I want to do is I want to add in a check that has to pass. Now, this is going to be the name of the job. So if we scroll back up, Let's try that again. If we scroll back up and we right click and go to a new tab for just a second and we go into our workflows file, then this is the workflow that's running, but this is the job. And when you create a status check on a repository rule set, you specify the job name. So I can come down here and I could say add a check. And because I have executed this job in the past seven days, if I type its name, it's going to actually pop up. So there's build and there's build and test, which was from another workflow. But in this case, I just want the one that was called build. And you can see it adds it and it knows it was GitHub Actions related. If I had not run the job yet, but knew the name, then I could type the name out, and if I can't find it, then I could just add this, and if a job would ran that had the Mickey te test, or if I just added this at this point, I'm not tying this to a job I know exists, but I'm assuming I'm going to go create it because it's going to expect a job called Mickey test to pass successfully, or a status check called Mickey test to pass successfully. But what we're doing here is we're just basically saying this build job has to pass successfully. And we're going to click Create. 
So this rule set is there. It's active. I don't think we're going to see anything under insights just yet because we haven't really hasn't collected any data yet. But now, because we have created this rule set against the default branch, if I go back to my pull request, we're going to notice now that that check is actually required. So what happens if the workflow fails? Because right now I could merge this. Well, let's find out. Let's go back over to our code. Let's switch over to that branch. Let's go back to our tests. Let's edit this. And let's uncomment out the bad tests. Added bad tests. I'm going to commit this back to that same branch. And because I have an open pull request, if I go back to my pull request, then what we're going to notice is the check is going to run again. And this time, the check is required. And you'll notice that I have a checkbox here where I could merge this without waiting for the requirements to be met, basically bypassing the brass protection rules. And that's because I put myself or the organizational owners in as someone who could override the branch protection rules. So if we look, as we expect, the test failed. We can see that if we come back out to the summary page and scroll down. We can see that two of our tests have failed. And if we go back to the pull request page, the test has failed and the merge button is grayed out. Again, I can override because I gave myself override privileges. But if I did not have override privileges, then I would just be, I would be stuck. I would have to fix the problem. So we really want to fix this problem. So let's go back and make the code change one more time. So we'll go back to that branch. We'll go back to the source. Go back to the tests. Edit the tests and do what you always do when a test fails. You just comment it out. commented out bad tests. We're going to commit this. Again, just like we saw previously, if we go to the pull request, we can see that it's going to rerun the check again. So we can come over here to the workflow file and actually watch it run the test if we want to. So this will take just a moment. The test should pass this time. And now when we go back to our pull request, we should be in a good position for the next video, which will allow us to merge this information or merge the pull request. And as part of our merge process, we're going to actually do a deployment as well. So it passed. So if we go back to our pull request, we can now see that everything looks great and we are ready to merge this code. So there you have it. Using repository rule sets, we were able to make that job and that workflow required so that it had to pass in order for me to be able to merge this code. So you can use repository rule sets to kind of enforce your rules and enforce your process. Now, next video, we're going to merge the pull request. And by merging the pull request, we're going to start our deployment process. So we're going to learn about GitHub environments. We're going to look at how we can deploy stuff to Azure. We're even going to learn a little bit about um, OpenID Connect, OIDC, and how we're going to use OIDC to connect to Azure. And then at that point, we will have shown you an end-to-end real-world demo. But we're not necessarily going to be done at that point. 
because then we can go on and talk about things like caching. We're going to talk about custom actions. We're going to talk about reusable workflows and we keep diving into some of the different pieces that make up GitHub Actions. So I'm looking for feedback from you as well. So if you've got specific things you'd like to see, let me know. Thanks for watching.